And welcome everyone on Monday, January 18th to our weekly look at the Power 36 and the AP poll. Uh, it has been an eventful week as they all have throughout the course of this unprecedented season. Um, a lot to get through here. I want to take some questions here over the next few minutes. All right. First of all, let's look at the rankings. Um, Gonzaga Baylor clearly have separated themselves. We thought Michigan would be in this top two and expand it to three. Can't do that. Michigan lost to Minnesota. Minnesota has obviously been exceptional at home. So they're just in that next tier. Um, who else could be joining them? Villanova, we don't know. They're coming off a pause on the March Madness 365 podcast, which pops on Tuesday mornings. You will hear from Jay Wright, and Jay Wright will explain where they are as a team. Will they have their whole team back for Seton Hall? Will it be more for Providence? How they handle the pause? What he said to his team during the second pause? Uh, essentially, they want to keep playing. And whether or not they can be one of these top two or three teams. Iowa. I think Iowa deserves to be in this top grouping by the way they're playing out West, uh, playing much better at home, obviously. Uh, and so, um, you know, and obviously they've, uh, they, I'm sorry, I said out West is because I popped a question here about Colorado. The way Iowa is playing in general, um, got distracted by the uh, West Coast co question there. So Iowa, the way they're playing home and road, because they won uh, at Rutgers. Uh, they have won at Northwestern. Um, so Iowa has played very, very well. Obviously, the late Luca Garza right now, the clear favorite for National Player of the Year. Cats ranks this week on March Madness 365 is talking about the 10 candidates for National Player of the Year, really nine below Luca Garza. All right, so then after that, after the top four of Gonzaga, Baylor, Villanova, Iowa, it gets interesting. Um, you could put these in any order. Uh, we've got kind of the same group of teams. Um, you know, and looking at both polls here. Michigan, Texas, uh, Houston, Tennessee. I'm higher in Alabama. 18 AP. I got them at eight. Big difference. They're undefeated in the SEC. Um, Ohio State. Sorry, a little misspelling there. I see that. It's missing an A. Um, so when I put our graphic together, we'll have to correct that. But anyway, Ohio State's playing really well in the Big Ten. Um, so I think they deserve it. UCLA. A little further back in the AP poll. Look what they're doing without Chris Smith. Boise State. Where is Boise State? Last week, I was like, where's Alabama? Alabama gets in. Now I'm saying two teams. Actually, three teams now I see this. Where is Boise State? Where is Colorado? That was what distracted me earlier. And where is Purdue? Purdue right now is playing some of the best basketball in the Big Ten. So you've got Boise State at 15 for me. Uh, you've got Colorado 20, Purdue 25. Yes. Um, you know, Oregon's still in here. Oregon lost to Colorado. Does that mean anything? Um, I like Virginia Tech. Good position. Virginia, I have them at 10. Destroyed Clemson, 13 in the AP poll. Um, now, I go longer, obviously. So I give some love to some other teams. Drake. Utah State swept San Diego State. Pitt's playing really well right now under uh, Jeff Capel. Um, you know, I kept Louisville in this grouping. I don't know where they were in the also receiving votes after they lost to Miami. Uh, LSU. Where's LSU? No LSU. Got to give them their due. No USC. Uh, Minnesota, they did keep in. I kept in as well. They had an interesting week. Um, Creighton. They stayed 11. Now, they lost in overtime at Butler. No Marcus Zigorowski, where they stayed in that range. All right, so there's my explanation. Before we get to um, the questions, a couple things. First of all, first time since 1961, just saw this on the uh, Fox Sports Twitter feed. First time since 61 that the AP poll has no Duke, no Carolina, no Kentucky. So let's first of all take a step back on whether or not the NCAA tournament will not have those three teams. Toss in Indiana for another blue blood. Um, and we say blue blood, traditional powers, not necessarily blue color in the uniform. Um, ultimately, I think Indiana will get there. I think ultimately Duke will get there. They're not 100%. I'm a little shaky on Carolina. And as of right now, I'm not feeling Kentucky. 
So of those four, I would say at least two get in. I don't think all four. Will it matter? No, because I think this is going to have, first of all, um, those fan bases could lose in the first round. I mean, the teams could lose and we lose the fan base. Uh, I think the rank ratings will be still sky high because everyone craves the tournament. They missed it last year. It's going to be compacted. So uh, I think it's still going to be a phenomenal event, as always. And I don't think we will necessarily um, miss them uh, at, at this juncture if they're not in. Obviously, we want the powers, but if they're not. Second point before we get to the questions. Um, this is my soapbox moment for you. I said this on the podcast as well. I'll say it again. By the way, sidebar, I got Clark Kellogg from CBS Sports, Jay Wright, as I said, from Villanova, and Tony Bennett from Virginia, all joining the podcast on Tuesday. Awesome show. I see the comments, okay, from some coaches. We shouldn't be playing. I'm going to keep saying this. You don't have to play. You don't have to coach. It's okay. We're not going to judge you. Opt out. Come back in 21-22. That's fine. This is an unprecedented season in an unparalleled year in all of our lives. The one in 100 year event. Okay? It's okay. But you know what? Don't judge others that are choosing to play. Because here's the deal. Either we're going to play sports or we're not. And that means no NFL. No NBA, no NHL, no college football, no tennis, Zippo, okay? We're obviously trying to do it. You cannot diminish the mental health aspect of taking something away. I know it. I am the father of a college student. It is not easy to have these college students literally only doing virtual academics. I got a high school student, same deal, okay? These athletes have a chance to play their sport. It is a release. It is a stress release. They want to do it. Jay Wright made this point on the podcast. I'll tell you all right here. He asked his team on their second one, on their second pause, do you guys want to keep doing this? They said yes. So they go through two different, I think, 10-day periods of quarantine isolation, and they came back. You know, all these teams that have experienced this, they want to play. If someone doesn't, that's okay. But you know what? Um... If you don't want to coach this season, then don't coach. And that's fine. And we're not going to judge you. You have every right to do that. And I don't think your salary should be docked um, if you don't feel comfortable. And that's fine. But don't try to take away the opportunity from everyone else that wants to do it. Okay? That is doing it safely where there has been money spent on every college campus, not just for athletes, for every student to make it safer, the testing that's going on across the country, it's unprecedented, obviously, the amount of money that's being spent. So people are trying to make this happen. And there's a whole group of people around, not just these athletes, not just these coaches, that are all trying to do this, risking their own at times, maybe, you know, safety uh, of potentially contracting the virus. So, um, you know, that's my soapbox moment. I have no problem if you want to sit it out. Just do it. Don't judge others. Like, we won't judge you if you decide to do that. All right. Let's go. Let's take some questions here. Will Syracuse make the da big dance, says Tanner Vassar. Um, getting swept by Pitt, which, by the way, is playing well. They're in a hole. They're going to have to win some games. They're going to have to beat teams above them going forward. Nick Long. Mean comment. You know, Nick Long, we don't need you coming onto this page. I don't judge you, so don't judge me. And Nick, we don't need you. Go to some other page if you're going to be mean and hateful. All right? See ya. We don't need you. All right. James Dye, what about UNC? They're really young. Um, and they've just been inconsistent. You know, they've actually not had to deal with the pausing lately, but uh, they're just young in a lot of key positions. And they've gone three straight years with a freshman point guard, as talented as they all have been. That's not easy to have a new leader at that key position every year. Uh, Joey, what does Kansas have to do to beat Baylor? So we're taping this on Monday. Well, this is live in this moment. Um, 
you know, Baylor showed against Texas Tech that they are relentless, resilient. The key thing for them, they're, they're obviously very long, and they do board well, but they got guards um, that are going to cause problems for Kansas, uh, and that's going to be a big issue. You know, can Kansas get to the rim? Can they get space to get off shots? Um, because it's been Flagler, Mitchell, Teague, Butler, any one of those four has had their own moments. Um, uh, all right. So let's see. Um, Steven, who do I think will win the Big Ten title? So, um, let's see. Uh, um, I go back and forth on this. You know, I've had Michigan, I've had Illinois, I've had Wisconsin, I've had Iowa. Um, you know, right now I'd have to go with the Hawkeyes. Um, I'm going to lean, obviously, Iowa. Um, you know, Jared, the reason I put Houston over Michigan at this moment in time was Michigan lost last week. Houston did not. Um, but I look, I dropped Michigan just like, what, two spots uh, after going one and one last week. So they're still, to me, right there. Um, Jeffrey wants to know which team is better, Big 12 or Big 10. Um, I would go with the Big 10. Um, but the Big 12 is closing the gap, but I, the Big 10 does not, does not have a single off night. As poorly as Nebraska's record is, they are a tough out. I know they're on pause right now. Um, Ethan, does Iowa have enough to get to a Final Four? No question. And they're defending much better right now. That's the main thing that I think helps Iowa. And it had been a big, uh, big question for them. Um, Nate, who's a better run? Who has a better chance for a run between Tennessee or Alabama. I would still lean Tennessee because of their experience. Alabama's playing better right now in this moment in time. And you could argue maybe they've got more of a go-to score in John Petty. Now, Alabama needs to get fully healthy. They're not right now. But I like Tennessee long-term because of their experience. Um, Let's see. Yes, William, the Big Ten is beating each other up. That's true. Um, but I think that's why you're going to have a log jam in seeds, to, the seed lines, I should say, two to six. It's going to be a ton of Big Ten teams. That's, you know, here's the thing. On one side, and we talked about this last week with the announcement of the um, bracketing principles. On one side, the one to 68, okay, will be easier because you get one, eight, you know, on down the line. You don't have to worry about geography. On the flip side, because there's going to be so many Big Ten teams, you are going to have to start moving some teams because of can't have them meet in the first round if they've met more than twice in the second, more than three times in the third. So you know how it works. So that'll be tough for the committee. Uh, Travis, West Virginia should be in my top 25. Okay, they're 27. Um, they're on pause right now. Um, I guess I'm being disrespectful according to him. Um, Tanner, who do I think will win the America East? Um, at the end of the day, I still like Vermont. Um, you know, we'll see if they can sustain it. You know, what's happening right now in that league and a lot of other leagues is they're splitting the games. So they're having these two game trips. So whether it's UMBC, New Hampshire, um, Stony Brook, they're all splitting these trips. And uh, Maine, I mean, you go down the list, Hartford, and that, that's been an issue for the league. Um, they can't get any separation. Austin wants to know if Minnesota can play like they did do at home, how far can they go? And I would argue they can go pretty far if they can mimic it. That's their problem. They can't play that well on the road. Look, the tournament's going to be a neutral site, as it always is. But, you know, we don't know if there will be any crowds. they got to be able to find a way to play better away from the barn. Um, Cody, what's Wisconsin's biggest issue is, you know, there are times when, and I was worried about this, that you wonder if they have their go-to player. Dimitri Trice has been it, but he can't be it all the time. So they need to find that one guy. All right. We run up against the clock. 
appreciate you. Be nice, especially this week more than ever, especially on this day we're taping this on Martin Luther King Day. Please be nice. Stay safe. We should all be together. All right? Uh, if you're obviously coming to this page, you love this sport. So we'll talk again next week. Stay safe, everyone.